Thank you very much, and thank you very much for being here. I know in Japan this is the lunch time, and we are fighting with our uh, appetite and hunger. Um, I like to give the brief overview of um, uh, because you know we are far away from Europe, and um, I may have to give some context in terms of um, education in Japan. And um, I think as uh, many developed countries are, we are also becoming an aging society and which impact uh, education um, in many ways. Um, the biggest impact is the decreasing college age cohort in Japan. So we have about uh, 700 four-year universities and colleges in Japan. And uh, those universities are competing for, for recruiting students because we have uh, we have enough institutions, but not enough students. So uh, that's um, one thing. And, and because of the aging society, uh, we have an increasing need for lifelong learning. And um, so in terms of um, the OERs in, in Japan, I would say the interest is pretty high, has been pretty high from the very beginning. And, uh, but I would say, I think it would be true to any country in terms of OC, OCW, uh, the general recognition of OCW and OERs are uh, pretty low in, in Japan, even among academics. Um, not many actually people I talk to know about OCW or OERs. And so, as uh, it's many places in the world, in the beginning it was mostly owing to individual teachers' effort and that's still mostly owing to individual teachers' efforts and those people who are interested in doing some technical stuff, getting grants and research, they are the people who are mostly doing uh, um, OERs and OCW in Japan. I need to mention um, the Japan Open Courseware Consortium, although tomorrow I think uh, the Professor Fukuhara from Keio University who is actually a manager of uh, this consortium and who may talk more about this consortium. But the Japan Open Courseware Consortium was established in, in 2005, May 2005. Uh, at the beginning, it was called Japan OCW Collaboration Alliance. And there were six universities as the founding members of the consortium, Osaka University, Kyoto University, Keio University, Tokyo Institute of Technology, the University of Tokyo, Waseda University, all of them are in Japan considered to be reputable, notable universities. And they um, committed themselves into this JOCW consortium as founding members. And they are, I think, still as the most active and most involved members of JOCW um, consortium. So later, the Japan OCW Collaboration Alliance became actually renamed as Japan Open Courseware Consortium. And where did it go? Yes. And the JOCW is one of, uh, one of the charter members of OCW consortium was started by MIT. And in terms of the number of institutions uh, involved in the OCW consortium, I think Japan is the third uh, uh, following, of course, US and, and Spain. This is actually taken from Japan Open Courseware Consortium website, and so it's not really made by me, and um, more likely that uh, was made by Professor Fukuhara, who is going to present tomorrow. And there are 23 regular members uh, of uh, Japan Open Courseware Consortium, regular members meaning universities, and four associate members, uh, associate members meaning nonprofit organizations, and 15 affiliate members, uh, affiliate members meaning corporations. So it's uh, pretty significant numbers, and numbers uh, are increasing. And in terms of number of courses published, unfortunately still the majority of courses are published in Japanese. That's that one of the big disadvantage of Japanese open courseware, uh, because most of the courses are published in Japanese, and it would be very difficult for people who um, don't speak Japanese uh, to understand. 
And even though who may be studying Japanese, it would be very difficult to understand because those are catering towards more Japanese natives. But the number of English courses, the courses uh, for which are actually delivered in English, is increasing, although it's slight, slight increase. In terms of monthly visit, um, again, this was taken from the Japan Open Course for Consortium website, and um, I was not quite sure I, yeah, why there is a gap between 2006 um, August and 2009 June, but uh, it seemed there was tremendous jump um, from 2006 and 2009. I wanted to show, uh, before I came to uh, this conference, I thought we will have internet connection, and I wanted to show some of the examples of JOCW course. Uh, this is from Tokyo University, which is the, the most renowned university in Japan, um, the course where. And what it um, tells you is that uh, they, the UT, which means University of Tokyo Open Courseware, uh, site usually contains uh, syllabus, lecture notes, and that's about it. University of Tokyo uh, website, the, uh, the Open Course for website, mostly contains syllabus and lecture notes. Um, okay. um, the Keio University, which is the Keio Gizuku University, uh, which is um, actually uh, now uh, the managing uh, institution of this consortium, they put up actually lots of uh, the video lectures. So um, here you see a syllabus and, and the list of courses and course videos. And again, I wanted to show um, the example of, of lecture, the video lecture, but um, I cannot. But you can see this is just filmed in the regular classroom using the big blackboard and professor speaking in front of the class. And uh, this is very traditional, uh, the lecture class. And interestingly, KO University has another uh, open site, which is not part of the open course tour. I think it's internal political reasons, but it's called the Global Campus. And it has, again, the video lectures of um, many of their uh, courses. And uh, within JOCW, there are two ways to search. One is Google search, and Google search directly link to the resources provided by JOCW institutions. Another way to search is the, the search engine provided by us, uh, the Open University of Japan, the Center of, of, um, of ICT and Distance Education. And uh, one of my colleagues actually developed the search engine to uh, search uh, JOCW site in, uh, in terms of the courseware. So if you if we use this search, you get to the course as a whole, not the individual resources. So there are two ways to search JOCW. I just uh, want, need to and want to introduce um, my university. Uh, the Open University of Japan. It used to be called until two years ago, two and a half years ago, called University of the Air, but we changed the name to the Open University of Japan in terms of English name. The Japanese name is still the same. It's called Hoso Daigaku. Actually, it literally means University of Broadcasting. And, um, and we became the member of JOCW last year in October 2009, but it was too late for us to actually open up some of the courses. So this year, actually just this uh, last month, the first of last month, we made 17 courses publicly available online. The 17 courses includes uh, four TV lecture courses, eight radio lecture series, and five special radio programs. And um, we are very different from other open courseware uh, courses because we are content complete, as um, David White is um, the term, meaning we are dedicated towards distance learners. And we, our main method of instruction is through broadcasting, meaning TV broadcasting and radio broadcasting. So when things are made online, the complete uh, video and uh, audio lectures of, of um, 
uh, actually 45 minutes is one, one lecture, and we have 15 times um, of that. So there is a, the complete series of, of um, course. This is us, uh, located in Chiba, which is uh, the prefecture where Narita Airport is located. And yes, Grief, you were, you were there how many years ago? Two years ago? Four years ago, Four years ago really? Well, time flies. Um, and um, actually, the left building is, it said, Hosodai Rakumin University of the Air. And right side building is actually our center of ICT and distance education. But until two years ago, it was called National Institute of Multimedia Education. Uh, because of the governmental decision, we were closed as an institution, independent institution, but we became part of the Open University of Japan because our building are next to each other. So it's kind of um, natural decisions to, to make. Um, so the Open University of Japan is the only open university in Japan, open meaning that, well, I think some of the people I talk to associate open universities, open meaning internet or online. But in our case, open meaning open access. Anybody who wants to, to, um, to receive higher education services, they can receive. In that case, it's open. And originally it was modeled after the British Open University, although the UKOU has evolved over many, many years, and uh, we're still stuck in some broadcasting uh, printed <laughs> materials mode. And we, uh, were, we were established in 1981, but started operation uh, in 1985. Um, the three objectives of our institution, my institution is to provide working people and housewives with a chance of lifelong university level education. So for most students uh, registering in my institution are the second chance uh, people who uh, couldn't actually receive the university education when they were uh, the college age. So many of my students and many of our students are retired people, elderly people uh, in 50s and 60s and 70s. And the second objective was to provide an innovative and flexible system of university level education open to high school graduate. So there are some high school kids who don't want to go to regular schools, then they can come to um, us. And also to cooperate with existing universities and make full use of the latest scientific knowledge and new educational technology in order to offer a system of higher education which matches contemporary needs. That's the third the, um, objective we are most uh, concerned with as a, our center because it says we should use uh, the new educational technology to make full use of latest scientific knowledge to offer a system of high edu higher education to match contemporary needs. Um, there are about 350 courses we offer per year and um, the funding, uh, the funding principle of our university is that uh, it should offer liberal arts education. So there aren't many professional education courses, although we really feel the need to offer those professional education courses because those are uh, really ideal for people who, who are working and who want some flexibility in terms of learning, but for some limitation of um, the, um, our funding <coughs> principle, we cannot really offer many professional uh, degree courses. Really? Okay. I only have five minutes. Um, so instruction types, um, well still we, we rely on radio and television for instruction and uh, it's 45 minutes TV lecture, actually it's over the air broadcasting. So anybody who has a TV set in Japan can actually watch our programs. They may not be able to get any credit, they may not be able to earn degrees, but they can watch our programs. In order to get degree or credit, they have to enroll. And we also produce printed materials, new printed material for each new course, which is a tremendous job for professors because they have to, to actually produce a new printed material for each course and they also have to film 45 minutes, 15 45 minutes lectures. And that's a very 
a heavy burden for professors or faculty members. Uh, this is our broadcasting system. We use the terrestrial broadcasting, the digital terrestrial broadcasting. We also use satellite broadcasting. We also use a cable TV. Um, we also use the radio, uh, digital radio and regular radio. Um, and we started to use internet for broadcasting and just recently. I will skip this because I don't have much time. So this is the typical our uh, TV studio. It's very traditional TV production. It takes three years from inception to actual completion for one uh, broadcast program is um, from inception to be actually aired. And once it started to be aired, usually uh, it aired for four years. So the seven years of lifespan, we have to think when we start thinking of new calls and cannot be very current because then after seven years, it may become obsolete or, or not really up to date. So we have to think of the seven year lifespan of a course. Okay, i skip that. Well, uh, this may be of interest to you. Uh, we spend about 7.2 million euros uh, to produce TV uh, broadcasting per year. And an average about 200, uh, 10,000 euros per TV course, uh, course meaning 15, 45 minutes, um, and uh, 4 million, uh, 35,000 euros for uh, radio course, so 40, uh, 15, 45 minutes um, radio course. This is our typical uh, talking head TV lecture programs. Most of the TV lectures are uh, talking heads of professors which I don't think is very motivating. And uh, so we started to actually um, make um, the courses available as an open courseware, uh, the part of the membership of JOCW. And I wanted to again show some of the examples, uh, but um, I cannot. One, one advantage of us uh, making things open as open courseware is that we have really high quality production. High quality, maybe not in terms of educational outcome sense, but high quality in terms of um, uh, the pixels and, and um, uh, high definition and audio quality and, and, the, and the studio set. So that we have um, NHK, which is a public broadcasting in Japan. Uh, we, um, the directors and cameramen from NHK, which is the public broadcasting, uh, like BBC, uh, come to us and, and they are the one who produce TV programs. So in terms of uh, aesthetics, I would say it's pretty high quality, but I don't know if that really lead to a high learning outcome that's uh, questionable. Okay, um, so we offer content complete uh, open courseware uh, by us. And so in our, in, we produce the video lectures anyway and audio lectures anyway. So difficulties are not really financial for us because it's not very difficult once it's produced digitally to make it um, available online. Um, the difficulty is mostly legal um, and cultural. And I will skip that. There are some other uh, OER activities in Japan by my former institution, NIME, and um, my current institution, Ponet. And we conducted some survey of um, all the higher education institutions in Japan, not only in terms of um, the sharing OERs um, or using OERs, but in terms of the general ICT usage in their teaching and learning. And uh, for that, we got pretty good uh, response rate, 83.2% um, from the University Ministry of Offices and 82.6% from department of schools and 48.7% for uh, junior colleges and college of technology. And so there are lengthy questionnaires we actually ask to them to complete. But some of the questions they were referring to or related to open educational resources. And so, for example, one of the, uh, the items we asked, the use of learning materials and content available outside the university as an expected benefit. 
So those, pe those institutions who actually consider the sharing of learning materials as the expected outcome of implementing e-learning. And so many institutions, the majority of institutions, either agree or somewhat agree to that statement. But um, not all of the institutions who actually responded to the question actually implemented e-learning. So if you look at the <coughs> bottom bar, there is a big chunk of missing, which means those institutions who didn't really implement e-learning. But um, those who uh, implemented, a majority said they agree or somewhat agree in terms of um, the sharing of learning materials as a resulted benefit of implementing e-learning. Um, this is something similar. We asked actually two different groups. One is the university central office, and the other one is the individual in department and schools. So there are two different um, populations, and that's why uh, two different uh, things. And this one, I actually remade the bar, the chart, getting rid of the missing. And among those who actually imp implemented e-learning, how many percentage of uh, institution, actually institutions or departments agree that um, the, um, the sharing the learning materials as a resulted benefit for uh, implementing e-learning. And as you see, 60 percent, over 60 percent either agree and some agree uh, to the statement. Um, okay, this is about the courage of technology. Uh, and this is actual practices of sharing of learning materials among those um, universities. Uh, interestingly, close to 60% of the institutions said they provide learning materials to other universities in Japan. And they, about the same um, uh, percentage said they use learning materials provided by other universities in Japan. And although it's much smaller percentage, but, but close to 20% provide learning materials to universities in other countries, and close to 20% universities said that they use the learning materials provided by universities in other countries. So it's a pretty good percentage in terms of the sharing and reusing of materials uh, internationally. And um, I think I'm running out of time. Issues in promoting OERs in Japan, this is the part actually I wanted to, to talk the most, but um, as many people said, funding, of course, we don't have deep pocket founders like Hubert Foundation, and the government funding is very limited and usually only for research. So the initial stage of maybe uh, the research project, it may work, but it cannot be used for sustaining and maintaining OER. So it's mostly rely on general institutional budget. And uh, this is, I think, the big obstacle in Japan. Uh, the Japanese universities have only two groups of people hired. Uh, the faculty members or the administrative staff. We don't have a professional staff, unfortunately, and it's very, very difficult to do anything, even in e-learning or doing OER, without having professional staffs. Faculty members have to, to work the ass off because they, they have to do the, their regular obligation, their teaching and research, in addition to the, the support services they are doing as the, the person who are interested in doing those kind of stuff. And administrative stuff, they cannot be relied on because they're usually hired as generalists. They rotate every two, three, three, four years in different department. They cannot become specialists because once uh, after two years, then three years, we, we thought, oh, we trained. But then they move to, oh, I have to move to accounting department. And then whatever they learn, they have to. So it's, it becomes a waste. So it's very difficult for universities in Japan to hire a specialist and actually to train a specialist in university setting. There are quality issues. Um, I looked at uh, Japan OCW's courses, and most of them are really not really suitable or not really adequate for um, the self-learners. Those people who are attending the classes, it may make sense, but those self-learners who don't attend the classes, most of the materials don't make any sense. Okay, uh, tell me about language barrier. Yes, the Japan, Japanese, is, is, um, it's difficult to actually justify the, the cost because um, it's not like English, you, you have an international market, or Spanish, you have another uh, country who speak Spanish. Uh, in Japan, uh, Japanese is only spoken in Japan. So we don't have much um, 
deliberate uh, intellectual property right issues, cultural issues. I'm sorry, I, <laughs> I did too much. I, I should have thought of that. Um, thank you very much. Culture barrier. Um, it's. I think it's more to do with the culture in <coughs> Japanese higher education, and I think most of the countries are. Um, and in, there are similar countries, but uh, prof professors are uh, respected authorities. They they shouldn't be uh, asked to do anything. They shouldn't be actually uh, ordered to do anything. They should be able to, to do whatever they want to do in their classrooms. And uh, to making things open, it's, and, and un making things under public scrutiny is really scary for them. And um, I think that's one of the issues. And, um, and also, there is very territorial. I think it's coming from respect of territory or respect of other people. They are very territorial uh, within academics. And they don't want to use other people's materials. And that's um, actually preventing reuse of materials if there's no reuse and, and what's the purpose of sharing. Um, so yeah, there are many other things. And I think that's just um, the tip of the iceberg. But. That's, that's too, that's too. They don't want to make it open. Um, you know, our, our institution, everything is kind of open through TV. It's broadcasting, Every, everybody can watch. But if we ask professors and faculty members, well, we want to actually make things available online, they said, oh, no, 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 no. Although they are available and you know, everybody can watch, but they don't want to do that, I think that's, um, I don't know, it's a cultural thing, um, but yeah. 